Thank you very much for joining also online. This session is going to be a, a technical deep dive on GaiaX. The content is a bit dense and I will be very happy to receive questions at the end of that presentation. So let's have a short introduction about GaiaX basis. It's there to promote European value and digital sovereignty. European value, we have transparency, reversibility, confidentiality, self-determination, security. Sovereignty, technically speaking, I will take the liberty to define it as the risk assessment, um, the control of the external dependency that we have, the autonomy level that we wish to have. And we have different area we can apply sovereignty to. Data sovereignty, that I will translate to data usage right control. Digital sovereignty, that will be open source, reversibility of the identity, reversibility of the licenses. Technical sovereignty, being able to know who provides you the technical stacks. Legal sovereignty, the immunity to laws and so on. Sovereignty, by the definition of the world, that's a state privilege, a royal privilege, and it doesn't apply to zip file and virtual machines, so I will prefer to use the word control. Next, we have data spaces. We've talked a lot about data spaces, so what are those? Those are virtual domain to exchange data. Data exchange across one or many ecosystems, like data pipeline, the ability to chain data one after another. And I'm going to give you a very concrete example that for me is a perfect illustration of why it creates value, not only within one organization, but many and over time. The example is from recycling catalytics ex uh, exchanger and to be able to recycle the rare earth element that you have inside. From the creation of this part, the inclusion of that part into a car, the car being uh, sell, repaired, and back to the recycling cycle. They can take years and it, uh, have, um, it involves a lot of different parties. That is an example of this data pipeline and creation value. Next word that we have on that slide, that's ecosystem. Ecosystem, that's a group of participants that exchange services. Could be data, compute, network, storage. It can be managed, self-managed, single tenant, multi-tenant, connected, disconnected, and an entire combination of all of that. However, ecosystem have two um, par properties. The first one is the visibility scope. Is your offering for yourself to private sectors, specific vertical market? The second one is the trust model within that ecosystem. Trust model, that will be the list of trust service provider, the one that issues the identity. What, is, what are the identity schema that are allowed? What are the list of label issuers? And the entire set of governance that needs to be there to operate the ecosystems. To support data spaces, we need to create this federation of ecosystem. And this composition of services, the ability to change services again, distributed processing if we want. That requires an interoperability assessment and the automation to scale deployment. This service composition, if I may take a shortcut, that's the capacity to plug and play services. Services, as we said, data, compute, and so on. And that capacity to plug and play brings autonomy, and that relates to sovereignty. This is not only a technical challenge, this is also a governance challenge. The proper level of autonomy will be achieved only if we keep the same level of security, scalability, resilience, conformity that we have right now, and try to remove the bottleneck that we have with financial and contractual intermediaries. That brings two additional requirements for GAIX, automation and electronic governance. So I will start now to deep dive a bit. Here is the story of two organizations, A and B. Each organization needs to start with the KYB, know your business, know your customer. That's the trust model, the identity. Which identity are valid? What level of authentication is required? Who are the CA, the certificate authority? Which rules issuers need to follow? Once they have defined that, then you can work along the ladder and define what the ecosystem will, like, will look like, uh, who provides what, how to communicate, how to find services, we have already a lot of ecosystems and we need to be able to make them bigger, to grow them, so find existing ones. Who is entitled to do what, basically? The governance. An example, within an ecosystem, some of them will elect members, others will nominate them. Some ecosystem will have one federator, another ecosystem will have many federators. 
that needs to be written down and that's not the association. The association is there to describe how it be done, could be done. Ecosystem needs also to define how they onboard participants. So that's why we have those boxes where you define the roles, the attributes, the services, and so on. Once you have that, then you can leverage the federator to operate this virtual dom administrative domain that is now up and running, and the user can extract and exchange services. By the way, this stack is from a NIST paper. That's something that already exists. And we are in the association here to make that connectable with other similar task stacks. That brings now to the service composition. Again, big fan of that. That's the ability, again, to plug and play. This is a standard pipeline that every organization knows how to do. Basic ETL, ELT um, schema. Let's imagine that every of those diagram here boxes, this is not one with one organization, but 12 organizations. How do you manage to deploy data scale? How do you negotiate the contract when you do the merge request or the join SQL join between two data sets that belongs to two different organizations with maybe several data owners for each of the data sets? How do you have the network interoperability between the cloud providers at the edge also? So this level of interoperability must be measured. And that's what we are doing. We need to have a common framework for business support for the provisioning, the configuration, um, portability, and interoperability. A small notes on portability and interoperability. Uh, data is not interoperable, data is portable. And you have the interoperability of the services. Portability, that's when you um, identify the characteristic of one element. Interoperability is when you characteristics, uh, identify the characteristics of two elements. So you have portable services, interoperable services, but the data is portable. The business support is also a challenge. For example, cost customer management. And we will, I will uh, talk a lot about the identity. Know your business. That's one of the key factors we need to start with. Customer management, that's the ability for taking the identity of one provider and use it in another provider's environment. Information such as um, contracting, pricing for the business model is not part of GAIC's scope. However, we can still detail that to enable others to build a broker on top of what we have defined as a governance. And that brings also legal challenges. We need to have a common framework for that. We are working on computable contract with predefined set of terms. It's challenging. We will have a lot of challenging for that. We don't aim at replacing existing contract. That's not our job, but we do believe that if we don't provide a template in the highly fragmented market that we have, um, the market must converge. Let's summarize. The initial goal was to create a federation of ecosystem for service stack composition across multiple providers. And we have European values that I've mentioned. We have digital sovereignty, digital control. We went through three planes. And we need to find a way to make those planes interoperable, findable. Knowing that we have existing data space, there is a paradigm about technology adherence and data gravity. We need to find, and it's a task that we have to work on really hard, the sweet spot between defining enough governance to allow those ecosystems to find each other and to communicate, and imposing too much where the ecosystem will say, thank you very much, but I'm out. And this sweet spot is the entire difficulty of where guys stands. Again, we have existing data spaces, and the idea is to make bigger and larger, so we need to connect them. Connect them, governance, governance start with identity, and so on. The trust plane, that's how do we enforce few functional and technical specification. On the functional specification, we have, for example, the definition of the trust anchor, the voting mechanism. How do we find catalogs? Again the idea to make them bigger and richer. That is defined by the association. That's what we work on on the architecture release paper from September. That's the governance part of GAIX, and that's defined by the association. Then we move to the management plane. Management plane, that's the enforcement on how do we describe properties of the self-description. We don't say how it must be done, we say how it must be described. And then the user, at the user plane, will be able to 
verify if they are really truly interoperable at the usage level. We have already defined most of the specification for the bottom part, the trust plane, verifiable credentials from the W3C, DIDs, decentralized identifier from the W3C, presentation exchanges, shape access control, ODRL. We have a full list of those specification format, which is in a document called the architecture of standard. We have also defined the GAIX registry, GAIX compliance, also defined in the architecture, um, reference architecture document from September. There are a few additional challenges. Again, the legal interoperability, making sure that when you have a contract, we have the same definition of what is a licensor, a licensee, the identification of machine readable terms and conditions. Challenges, but again, in a highly fragmented market, if we don't converge, it won't work. And then we have the technical interoperability also, the ontology of the description, the vocabulary, the asset, orchestration. So now the fun part, the implementation. We worked a lot in the operating model in the architecture document for September. As I said many times, we have a huge um, expectation in front of us, but when we start and we drill down of where we should um, start with, that's always the identity. Being able to have two participants, A and B, being able to recognize the identity schema of the other. So we have a strong focus right now on identity. And this is relevant. We want to be able to, for a company, for organization, to carry their attributes, their role, from one place to another. The first services that will be um, deployed by the association in the spirit of test-driven development, that's a service that issues verifiable credentials. As an association, we will be able to issue verifiable credentials whether or not you are an association member. So we adopt the same specification that we specify for the others, on ourselves and retry it ourselves. For that, we have few challenges. All the drafts that we are using specification are in very early stage in their, in, uh, let's say, life cycle in the industry point of view. And the, um, we have, for example, the challenges of being able to chain certificate that we have from the current world, X509 certificate, to the new one of DIDs, decentralized credentials, decent, uh, verifiable credentials. For that, we are working on uh, a prototype that use, for example, in a did document verification method with the old one, authentication with my X509 certificate stored there. Everything there is based on did web for the one who would like to know where is it stored, blockchain, not blockchain, proof of work, proof of stake. We leave that aside for now. This is very the idea to validate how the model work. Um, and for that, we use did web. The second services that we work on is the bootstrapping of the GAIX compliance. That's a critical part of the services that we need to have, we must have, to enable all the Lighthouse projects that have been mentioned and will be mentioned uh, later. This GAIX compliance is a service that takes as an input the output of the first one and being able to feedback, control, implementation, improvement into the first one. Very classical test-driven development. And the source code is stored on GitLab, on the GitLab of the association, or everything is already public. Public in read access mode, and welcome everyone in read write access mode under request. We also have some work in the catalog synchronization, the query languages, how to make that scalable. Um, I know that the next presentation is about the GXFS, so I will not try to step back to step on the presentation, and I will. Um, looking forward to, to have the GXFS services up and running. The second call for action on my side will be the hackathon. We have a hackathon event um, beginning of December where everyone is able to join also to work on those services. So thank you very much. Um, Pierre, we have two questions. So the first question is, thank you for the insights on the data infrastructure ecosystem and reference architecture for seamless interoperability collaboration and communication are, are key. Uh, what is your opinion in this direction? How can the two uh, be combined for a better approach? I didn't get the question, sorry, <laughs> honestly. <laughs> so, the architecture document and the AOS. Yes. Uh, so basically, um, what they're saying is how um, can you enable a seamless interoperability collaboration uh, through 
communication? And uh, how could you possibly share your thoughts about visual collaboration and how to tackle typical communication challenges in our value-added networks? I'm still not sure if the question is about how do we work on the document and how yeah. do we enable that yeah. in the gallery. So um, yeah. working on the document, that's um, done like any open source project, restricted to the member because that's the privilege of the member of the association to work on those documents in a very transparent way. All the presentation I'm giving, all the documents are on GitLab. The access and the automation, the granting access to that is also automated. And that's based on meritocracy. The more you contribute, the more relevance um, contribution you make, uh, higher your rights will get for the contribution. Thank you very much. So based on communication and being able to prove by the example. Thank you very much. Um, is there anyone that would like to address any specific questions to Pierre before we move to our next? Yeah, this is the question. We've already responded that. Uh, but from our audience, if there is anyone in any question that we may want to address or clarify now that he's here with us. Any question on the RFC standards? Okay, so I guess everything was clear. Thank you very much, Pierre. Thank you very much.